Hey, thanks for uh, viewing. It's uh, 2.50, uh, Saturday, April 18th, 2020. We're currently under quarantine because of COVID-19. Anyway, this is a significant day for moi because April the 18th, 2000. I was in 2010, I was in uh, Kansas City, IHOP. It's, uh, for me, it was uh, kind of like a spiritual retreat. Anyway, I took a, um, a week and a half off work and I went down there, paid my own way and everything. But uh, really significant time. But I'm right down because it was Passover season and uh, I always look forward to the uh, springtime and this is a great day to uh, visit. I saw peak times kind of down in Kansas City. You have to uh, email them and do all that stuff. They have many different uh, ministries going on. They have uh, prayer and worship 24-7 since September 19th. 1999 they also have um it's online they also have uh dance um uh, um um studio where people can dance to the lord and they have a prophecy room they have a healing room and they have uh Oh, there's many other rooms, but you have to email them, get an advance, and then they'll see you. There's a team of them. Uh, could be two to four people. Um, I really recommend going there. So that happened for me uh, 10 years ago. So it says, look for 18, April 18th. I went on this scripture because it was the first time Jesus spoke and he opened up the scroll where it was written, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to be hope for the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted and new eyes for the blind and to preach to the prisoners, you are free. I have come to share the message of Jubilee. 50 years freedom. Every 50 years, all the slaves go free. They never kept that to the shame. For the time of God's great acceptance has begun. After he read this, he rolled up the scroll and handed it back to the ministers and sat down. Everyone stared at him, at Jesus wondering, what he was about to say. And then he said, these scriptures came true today in front of you. They were flabbergasted. They had uh, Isaiah write that verse. And they quoted it many times, read it many times in the synagogues. And here in comes Jesus' first sermon. First, he opens up the scroll to Isaiah 61. He was asked to read and that was scripture first for that day. Man, that was powerful. Everyone was impressed by how well Jesus spoke in awe of the beautiful words of grace that came from his lips. But they were surprised at his presumptuousness to speak as a prophet. So they said among themselves, who does he think he is? Is this not Joseph's son who grew up here in Nazareth? And Jesus said to them, I suppose you quote to me this proverb, Doctor, go and heal yourself before you try to heal others. And you will say, work the miracles here in your hometown that you've heard about in Copernicum. But let me tell you, no prophet is welcomed or honored in his hometown. Isn't it true that there were many widows in the land of Israel during the days of the prophet Elijah when he looked, locked up the heavens for three and a half years and brought devastating famine all over the land? 
but he wasn't sent to any of the widows living in that region. Instead, he was sent to a foreign place to a widow in Zarephath of Sidon. Or we have not considered that prophet Elijah healed only Naaman the leper, the Syrian commander, rather than one of the many Jewish lepers living in the land. God always goes outside the box, heals and does miracles. Then everyone present heard about these words and they erupted with furious rage and they mobbed Jesus and threw him out of the city, dragging him to the edge of the cliff on the hill on which they, the city had been built, ready to hurl him off. But he walked right past, right through the crowd, leaving them all stunned. So literally, his first sermon, they kicked him out. <laughs> They're going to throw him over the cliff. Oh, man. That's the path we're called to go on. Anyway, I just wanted to touch base with that 14. Why is it significant to me and what happened? But we're called to uh, be like Jesus. What would Jesus do? There it goes. You're going to be crucified died, buried, if you follow in his footsteps, holistically. Sometimes you're good, most of the time you're bad. And they misquote you and all sorts of evil is said about you falsely on account of Jesus. It's the same story repeated over and over again throughout history. Anyway, I just wanted to leave you with that. So God, help us to be an example like Jesus. To set the caps free. To let the Spirit come upon us. To know this with hope. For the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted, new eyes for the blind, and to preach to the prisoners, you are free. To come and share the message of Jubilee. God's great acceptance has begun. Mm. That scripture is loaded. I've heard it taught about many, many times. So God notice with your Holy Spirit. And uh, be with us. I don't know what this coronavirus is going to do. Long term, people are getting really antsy. People are getting cranky. It's, it's real. Dr. Phil was on the news and talked about the long term effects of isolation. It's very, very negative. It's almost as bad as COVID 19. You can't shut the global economy down. Globally, the people cannot go outside. And some nations will arrest you. Anyway, I can't believe they have that much power. They're blaming that crisis, the economy on uh, COVID-19. They use any excuse the powers that be to cover their tracks, to blame it on something FF false like. Anyway, during this Passover season, Passover, the angel of death pass over us by the blood of the Lamb. Moses was led to Red Sea and he parted the Red Sea and it says that the people went through and they're baptized in the sea. Baptism in the Jordan. Spoke about that. But the angel of this passed over when he seen the blood of the lamb on Moses. They had to put it on the outside of the house, on the door, on the sides and on the top. It's the blood of the Lamb that spoke of Jesus. At the same time Jesus was crucified, the religious people were past, celebrating the Passover. Mm. And they still do today. If they're commanded to, we're commanded to. Anyway, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, our sacrifice, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but not have everlasting life. Believe in heart, confess in mouth, salvation. It's that easy. You don't have to swim across the ocean, you don't have to climb up the mountain. All those feats, you don't have to be really smart, you don't have to be really rich. It doesn't matter. Just believe faith. For there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. Amen.